Why is the U.S. Navy taking so long to build its ships? In a time when naval strength is crucial and other countries are rapidly expanding their fleets, the U.S. Navy seems to be lagging. In this video, we'll dive deep into the reasons behind the slow pace of U.S. Navy shipbuilding, exploring the challenges they face, including budget constraints, labor shortages, and global competition. Number 1. U.S. Navy Shipbuilding Challenges The U.S. Navy's shipbuilding challenges extend beyond just budget constraints and workforce shortages. One critical issue is the complexity of the supply chain. Modern warships require thousands of components sourced from a vast network of suppliers. Many of these suppliers produce highly specialized parts that are not used in any other industry. In recent years, the number of suppliers capable of producing these high-tech components has dwindled due to market consolidation and a lack of investment in the defense sector. This has created a fragile supply chain where delays or disruptions at a single supplier can cause cascading delays throughout the entire shipbuilding process. For example, if a supplier of critical electronic systems faces production issues, it can delay the installation and integration of these systems, which then impacts the entire construction schedule. The Navy's stringent quality control requirements also contribute to delays. Every component and subsystem must undergo rigorous testing and certification to meet military standards. While these standards are essential for ensuring the reliability and safety of the fleet, they add time to the construction process. Moreover, the Navy often requires custom-made equipment rather than off-the-shelf solutions, adding further complexity to both the design and construction phases. This bespoke nature of naval equipment means that each ship can present a unique set of challenges, even if it belongs to a class of ships that have been built before. Another challenge is the design process itself. The Navy frequently updates ship designs to incorporate the latest technologies, but these design changes can lead to significant delays. For example, if new weapon systems or defensive capabilities are introduced mid-construction, shipbuilders must adapt their processes, often resulting in redesigns or retrofits that can delay the project by months or even years. Furthermore, the Navy has been criticized for initiating production on new ship classes before the design is fully matured. This concurrent design and build approach has led to issues such as cost overruns and delays, as problems are often discovered during construction that necessitate expensive and time-consuming fixes. Additionally, the acquisition process for new ships is often mired in bureaucratic red tape. Before construction can begin, the Navy must go through a lengthy process of defining requirements, securing funding, and awarding contracts. This process involves multiple stakeholders, including Congress, the Department of Defense, and private defense contractors, each with their own priorities and agendas. Negotiations over cost, design, and schedule can take years, and any changes during this process can result in further delays. This extended timeline can lead to outdated technologies being implemented by the time the ship is completed, as the initial specifications may no longer align with current naval needs or technological advancements. Number 2. Skilled Labor Shortage in Shipyard Capacity the skilled labor shortage in the U.S. shipbuilding industry is a multifaceted issue with deep roots. One key problem is the aging workforce. Many of the experienced shipbuilders who hone their skills over decades are reaching retirement age, and the industry is struggling to attract younger workers to replace them. This is partly because shipbuilding is a demanding field that requires specialized training and a high level of technical expertise. It's not just about manual labor. Modern shipbuilding involves advanced skills such as precision welding, computer-aided design, CAD, and familiarity with complex electronic systems. Training new workers to a level where they can contribute effectively to building sophisticated warships can take several years, creating a gap that the industry is finding hard to bridge. Additionally, the U.S. educational system has seen a decline in vocational and technical training programs. High schools and community colleges have shifted their focus more towards preparing students for four-year degrees, which has led to fewer students pursuing careers in trades like shipbuilding. The result is a lack of new entrants into the industry who possess the necessary skills. To compound the issue, the shipbuilding industry competes with other sectors like aerospace and automotive manufacturing for skilled labor, making it even harder to attract talent. Shipyard capacity is another major constraint. 
Many U.S. shipyards are operating beyond their optimal capacity due to the high demand for both new ships and the maintenance of the existing fleet. For instance, some yards that were designed to build a few ships per year are now tasked with handling multiple complex projects simultaneously. This overcrowding leads to inefficiencies and bottlenecks. Furthermore, the physical infrastructure of many shipyards is outdated, with some facilities still using equipment and processes that date back decades. Modernizing these facilities requires significant investment and time, which adds to the delays in shipbuilding. Moreover, many shipyards face a spatial limitation. They were built at a time when ships were smaller, and they now struggle to accommodate the larger, more advanced vessels that the Navy requires. Expanding shipyard facilities to handle larger ships is a massive logistical challenge that involves not just construction, but also environmental and regulatory hurdles. This adds another layer of complexity to an already strained shipbuilding process. The combination of a dwindling workforce and constrained shipyard capacity has forced the Navy and shipbuilders to reconsider their approach. For example, they are exploring the use of automation and robotics to supplement the labor force. While automation can handle some aspects of construction, many tasks in shipbuilding still require human skill and judgment, especially when it comes to the intricacies of integrating various ship systems. Despite these efforts, the reality is that addressing the skilled labor shortage and expanding shipyard capacity are long-term challenges that will continue to impact the speed and efficiency of U.S. Navy shipbuilding. Number three, comparative naval strength and China's shipbuilding strategy. China's naval expansion is strategically designed to project power in key maritime regions, especially the Indo-Pacific. Unlike the U.S. Navy, which focuses on a global presence with a range of high-capability ships like aircraft carriers and nuclear submarines, China's shipbuilding strategy emphasizes rapid production of a larger fleet. The People's Liberation Army Navy plan has been building multiple classes of vessels simultaneously, including destroyers, frigates, amphibious assault ships, and submarines at a pace that far outstrips U.S. shipbuilding efforts. China's shipyards, such as the Jiangnan and Dalian shipyards, are highly modernized and operate 24 7 churning out vessels at a rate that allows China to significantly enhance its maritime presence annually. China's approach includes the construction of a variety of warships tailored for specific roles. For example, the Type 055 destroyer is a multi-role ship with advanced missile systems designed to provide air defense and anti-ship capabilities. Its frigates, like the Type 054A, are geared towards anti-submarine warfare, while the growing fleet of corvettes and Coast Guard ships are optimized for operations in the South China Sea. This multi-tiered fleet enables China to enforce its territorial claims and secure its maritime interests through a persistent and layered naval presence. While the U.S. Navy focuses on fewer but highly advanced vessels, the plan's philosophy hinges on building a larger number of good enough ships that can be rapidly deployed to assert dominance in contested regions. China's naval modernization also includes a significant investment in anti-access slash area denial, A2 slash AD capabilities, such as long-range anti-ship missiles and sophisticated surveillance systems aimed at deterring U.S. carrier strike groups and limiting their operational freedom in the Western Pacific. This strategy seeks to challenge the U.S. Navy's ability to project power near China's coastlines and disrupt its influence in the region. Moreover, China's shipbuilding industry benefits from close collaboration with its commercial shipbuilding sector, allowing for the quick transfer of advanced technologies and shipbuilding practices. This collaboration has led to the mass production of commercial vessels and warships using similar methods, reducing costs and build times. Additionally, the plan has invested heavily in domestically produced weapons and electronics, reducing reliance on foreign suppliers and ensuring a more self-sustained shipbuilding capability. China has also prioritized the development of auxiliary and support vessels to enhance its Navy's operational range. Fleet replenishment ships like the Type 901 provide the plan with extended operational endurance, allowing it to sustain naval operations far from Chinese shores. This logistical capability is crucial for a Navy aiming to operate on a global scale. 
from the Indian Ocean to the coast of Africa, signaling China's intent to transition from a regional to a blue water navy. Number four, solutions and future outlook. The U.S. Navy is exploring several solutions to overcome its shipbuilding challenges with a focus on streamlining production, modernizing facilities, and innovating ship designs. One immediate solution is the use of block buy contracts, which allow the Navy to purchase multiple ships over several years in a single deal. This approach enables shipbuilders to plan more efficiently, secure long-term material contracts, and stabilize their workforce, reducing overall costs and construction time. Block buys also provide shipyards with the financial security needed to invest in advanced tools and infrastructure improvements, addressing bottlenecks in production. Digital design and construction techniques are increasingly being adopted to reduce lead times. By using advanced 3D modeling and digital twins, shipbuilders can simulate and troubleshoot the construction process before the first piece of steel is cut. This technology helps identify potential design flaws early and optimize the production process, minimizing costly delays and retrofitting efforts. Some shipyards have also begun integrating augmented reality, AR, for more precise and efficient assembly, enabling workers to visualize complex structures in real time during construction. Shipyard optimization is another area of focus. The Navy's Shipyard Infrastructure Optimization Program, SIOP, aims to revamp public shipyards by modernizing facilities, improving workflow layouts, and upgrading equipment. These enhancements are expected to increase throughput and accommodate the construction of larger, more complex vessels. Private shipbuilders are similarly investing in their facilities, incorporating automation and robotics to handle repetitive tasks such as welding and material handling, thus speeding up production without compromising quality. The Navy is also diversifying its fleet composition to include smaller, more affordable ships like frigates and unmanned vessels. This diversified approach allows the Navy to increase its ship count more rapidly while spreading risk across a broader range of platforms. The development of unmanned surface and underwater vehicles is particularly promising as these assets can be built and deployed at a fraction of the cost and time required for traditional warships. Integrating these new platforms into the fleet can alleviate pressure on shipyards tasked with building larger capital ships. Addressing the skilled labor shortage is a long-term solution requiring coordinated efforts between the Navy, shipbuilders, and educational institutions. Workforce development programs are being expanded, including partnerships with community colleges and trade schools to provide targeted training in critical shipbuilding skills. Some shipyards have also initiated apprenticeship programs that combine on-the-job training with classroom instruction, creating a pipeline of skilled workers. These initiatives aim to replenish the workforce with qualified personnel capable of meeting the demands of modern naval construction. The U.S. Navy's protracted shipbuilding process is the result of multiple intertwined factors, including the complexity of modern warships, budget constraints, workforce shortages, and global competition. While the Navy retains technological superiority, it faces a significant strategic challenge in keeping pace with China's rapidly growing fleet. The road ahead involves not only addressing these immediate issues, but also rethinking shipbuilding strategies and adapting to a changing global landscape.